So you're about to start recording your sales team's calls for the first time and you've been on a journey about this. You've realized why it's important that you've procured the right tech, you've got your exec team sign off, but it's a really good place to start by remembering that your sales team are just on day one of their journey and you're going to want to get this off on the right foot. And so that's what the next 10 minutes or so is about. We're going to go through three things I think are important in getting your new sales call recording off to the, off to a right start. We're going to talk about understanding the resistance. We're going to talk about the four ingredients that your launch messaging needs. And we're going to talk about continuing that conversation post-launch to really drive engagement. So let's start at the beginning with this idea of resistance. Look, you know that any change can cause a level of uncertainty in your team. Yes, you're always going to have your champions, those people that jump on board, that get the vision on it. And you're going to get your detractors. So you're going to get the people that will find it difficult. They're resisting in some way. And then you're going to get your fence sitters, the people that sit between the two that will quite happily be pulled between whichever group pulls them hardest. The question is, why would your sales team find this idea of call recording difficult? And this is your sales team. They live in the most visible area of the business. Everyone knows what their performance is like. Their, their end destination at the end of a month or quarter is a, is a, is a leaderboard. So... The consequence of the leaderboard world we live in in sales is it creates a very status-driven environment. Status meaning that everyone knows where we land. Everyone knows our spot. We know where we sit amongst our teammates. Are we an underperformer, a reliable contributor, or sometimes known as a soldier, or an overperformer? Where do we sit in the leaderboard? And the thing about status is it's very personal to us. It's something we either want to protect or it's something that we want to grow. And any change to our team and how we operate can signal a risk to our status. And as David Rock, author David Rock says, that risk to our status can make us feel threatened and cause us to feel anxious or worried. So let's look at that. What might, what might an overperformer of your team think when they hear, we're gonna start call recording. What might they think? They might think, well, I don't need I don't need this kind of micromanagement. I'm really senior. I know what I'm doing. And they might feel like it belittles their status. What might one of your reliable contributors think? Well, they might think, am I going to get found out for not being as good as what people might think I am? All my weaknesses are going to be on show. Might feel like it belittles their status. What might one of your underperformers think? They might think, is this going to be the change that costs me my job? That's the ultimate threat to status, losing their job entirely. And so a really good place to start is just to have an understanding that everyone is going to react differently. And it doesn't matter their seniority or their length in the business or how good they are. Everyone reacts differently to the change and everyone's going to want to feel seen and heard. And that includes your champions also. You know, your champions are a really strong group that you should use when you're rolling anything new out. And there's different phases of that from make, get, getting them involved in the decision and having them involved in what tech you, you actually buy, from the launch, getting everything set up and ready to roll out, from training your current team to your future team members that are coming in, or just ongoing support and having someone there that takes on feedback, answers questions. But just like your resistors, You've got to be aware of them. You've got to embrace them. Just saying thank you to your champions won't go unnoticed. But it's important to recognize these different groups, recognize the way they come to your new initiative so that when we go into our messaging, we can really make sure we have tailored it to every single person in your team. So let's look at that now. There are four areas to the messaging, starting with why, the benefits to your reps individually, the benefits to the whole business, and then let's remove that threat to status as we've just talked about. Let's start at the top with why. Okay, so please don't, please don't launch call recording with your sales team by saying, we're going to start recording your sales calls um, because that will, that will throw some wobblies and you'll have some people that immediately start to think, oh my gosh, that sounds scary and, and not hear it say. Let's just look through what I've, the, what I've written on the screen. We're committed to your development and see an opportunity to begin coaching our sales calls to improve results. We've invested in a tool which will help us recognize your strengths and help you identify where you can improve to increase your win rate by recording and analyzing the whole team's sales activity. There are four ingredients in this message that make it what it is. Firstly, it's supportive. We're committed, we're invested as your leaders, as your managers. This is us doing this for you. 
It's positive. Opportunity, improve, strength, increase, win. It's got positive language, positive vibe. It's, it's centered around ownership. You know, this is about you. It's giving you the tools you need to be great. It's about your development. It's about your strengths. It's about your win rate. And finally, it's united. It's inclusive. We're committed. It's our sales cause. It's we've invested. It's our whole team making everyone feel united and that they're in it together. So whether you are verbalizing your launch, your new, your new initiative, or whether you are writing it out and sending a message, just take those extra few minutes just to carefully think through how is this coming across? Maybe just get someone to read it through for the first time. Is it giving people the right impression and giving them that feel good factor you want as you launch your new initiative? Then you're going to talk to your team about the benefits to them individually, because there's quite a few. The first is it's going to reduce their admin time and sales team, they, your sales team hate doing admin, but now their calls are being recorded. Everything's going to be annotated, so they haven't got to waste time taking notes and recording notes. They can instead pay extra attention listening to their prospect on the phone. They've got proof of what was sold. How many times have we heard the sales have said this was sold, sales have sold something that's, that we haven't got? How many times have we heard that? And it's often a miscommunication on the customer side. Now you've got recorded evidence of what was said, and that can be used to your advantage. It improves the client handover process. You know, all that great knowledge that you've got in that, in that sales process, all of those customer challenges and the goals all recorded there. You can hand them on to your success rep so they can feel really prepared and knowledgeable going into their first meetings with the new client. It's going to improve your sales rep's meeting preparation because they can go back. They can listen to a call before they go into the next one and be better prepared, have a better plan, better success. And then finally, it is going to enable your team to self-coach. And they should understand that. And they should understand the benefits of that. Our data shows that reps who listen back to three to four hours of sales calls per month, they have a 5.5% higher win rate than those that don't self-coach. That's incredible. It gives them the power to grow. It gives them the power to own their own development. So you're going to talk to them about the benefits to them. Then you're going to talk about the benefits to the wider business. And sure, everyone in the business is going to benefit from more sales revenue, more money, more opportunity. But it goes beyond that. Let's talk about it speeding up the feedback loop. You know, we hear something on a sales call. We want to get that message back to product, that message to customer success. You can easily share that knowledge now with the rest of the teams. That is only going to improve decision making. Right, whether that is which feature do we build next, which product do we build next, how do we get our messaging right as we launch a new feature for the sales team, it's going to help people make better decisions purely because they are better connected to your customer. So there is a fantastic amount of business benefits to recording the sales team's calls and sharing them with the business as well. And it really elevates their position as a sales rep and helps the rest of the business understand what it takes for them to do a really great job on the front lines. In the final part of the messaging, we want to remove that threat that I talked about at the beginning. So the first thing we want to do is normalize any worry. And the best way you can do that is by having someone that's you know, got some senior status within the team who is really championing the idea, but can maybe share what they might be worrying about, worrying about listening back to their calls, worrying about hearing their own voice. But immediately as someone sees someone maybe more senior to them or someone they, that appears really confident about a change, share something they're worried about, it can really normalize that fear amongst everybody else. The second thing is about recognizing strengths, really enforcing that this change is about recognizing and seeing people for what they are great at as much as is about improvement. And as David Rock tells us, recognizing strengths is a great way of making people feel they've got a better status or improving their feeling around status. And finally, the best way to remove any issue around status is to remove anyone else from the game. So what I mean is making sure people understand that this is about them as an individual. It's about their journey that they're going on, not anyone else's. And maybe they've been a disservice to their previous coaching or training because it's maybe been a little bit more structured for the whole team. Now it's going to be about each individual and what they need. And it's about them running their own race. That's a great way of 
minimizing any issue around status. So we've covered the why, the benefits to the reps individually and the business, and we've removed that threat to status in your launch messaging. But the most important thing we do after we've launched anything is continuing that conversation with your team, making sure they continue to recognize how your champions are embracing it and continue to talk to anyone that's struggling with it or resisting it in any way. Three things I like to talk through, experience, questions and ideas. Firstly, what's your experience been like so far? Ask your team, ask them individually. Be careful not to put the positive leading on that question, which goes like, What's your experience been like so far? Good? Don't do that. What's your experience been like so far? And leave it. Open and welcome every response because you want to hear them. What questions have come up for you? And the key is what questions have come up from you, not have any questions come up from you. Because have you have can, can prompt a no, no, I'm fine. What it, it signals, I expect you've got questions. Feed me, tell me what they are. Let's talk about them. Have you any ideas? Getting people's input, getting their ideas is the best way to take someone off the sidelines from an idea and getting them right in the heart of any change. So it's brilliant to include anyone's ideas, even if it's just listening to them and talking about them. So the first 30 days or so after you've launched, you're going to talk through experience and questions and ideas with your team. Do that collectively, do that in your one-on-ones. And then after about the first month or so, you should find that your new initiative is well embedded and everyone is really embracing the change. So everyone at the end of this will feel like they've been understood. They understand, sorry, they've heard the why, they get it. Everyone's going to feel seen because you've talked to them, you're communicating about it, you're hearing their feedback and input, and they're going to feel included. Any ideas they've got, you're going to, you're going to listen and they're going to feel like they're part of the change. I hope that's been helpful. Good luck with your rollout. If you've got any questions about it at all, please get in touch with me. Um, I'd love to talk to you about it. No problem at all.